Hi, this is Rabbi Jeremy Lawrence from the Great Synagogue in Sydney. No sooner is one Yom Tov over than the next seems to start. All Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur are designated as the Yamim Nora'im, the Days of Awe. Sukkot is a part of the trio known as the Shalosh Regalim, the Three Foot Festivals, with Pesach and Shavuot, so named after the pilgrims who used to make the journey to Jerusalem. There is even so a developing theme linking Sukkot with Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur which preceded it. The symbols of Sukkot are very physical. There are the Lulav and Etrog, Hadassim and Aravot, the four species, which are clearly symbolic of something, but the Torah and the Talmud don't tell us exactly what. Many alternatives are offered, such as different types of people or different parts of the body. We bring them together, we bring ourselves together, in the service, prayer and praise of God. However, without any clear explanation, we are left ourselves to imbue and enhance the physical festival with our own personal spiritual understanding. What could be more paradoxical than the Sukkah? a residence commanded by God, but necessarily temporary and without the protections of an airtight or leak-proof roof. As if an antidote to the expression, safe as houses, the Sukkah is designed to make us feel vulnerable and at the mercy of God's elements. So how do our different festivals relate? Rosh Hashanah is the traditional anniversary of creation. One of its motifs is God wandering amongst us in this world. From the Simanim, or omens on the Yom Tov table, through to the ram's horn, it is a festival of physical commemoration and celebration. On Yom Kippur, the motif is our journey to a spiritual world. We eschew physicality. We don't eat or drink, wash or anoint ourselves. Yom Kippur is described as a day of affliction, as we separate ourselves from our physical creature comforts and chart a course to God. One festival brings God into our world, and the next takes us into his. Sukkot provides the synthesis. It is said in this world, but the focus is our reaching out to God, looking for His presence, looking for His meaning, and beseeching His protection. The last couple of weeks should help to reinforce that message and help us to internalize it. From the stunning red dawn here in Sydney, through to the devastation of the tsunami in the Pacific and the earthquake in Indonesia, we see nature at its most awesome and terrible. We pray that the God of creation is manifest through His compassion, giving rain and sun, wind and shade where they are needed, and in appropriate measure. We pray that he give comfort and protection to all his peoples. And we should use the season too to reflect upon our impact on our natural world. The politics of climate change and its protocols aside, each of us should be looking to conserve energy, to minimize waste, and to protest the evils of deforestation, overfishing, and environmental poisoning, which threaten and endanger so many beautiful species. Like my Sukkar in Tzach, Sukkot is a festival of precarious balance. May our festival be a happy one. May we reach out to God and find his blessings, security and peace in our fragile and vulnerable lives. And may we and all our families enjoy a Chag Sameach.